morning, church. How are you guys doing this morning? Um, is anybody ready to worship? I mean, it's a great day to be in God's house. I want to encourage you to, to sing with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength to hold nothing back this morning. No matter what you walked in facing, we serve an awesome God. The Bible tells us as you worship, He's with us. There were two or three are gathered. He is there. And this morning, we have to worship Him. Are you excited? I'm coming back. I'm coming back to the star where you found me. I'm coming back to your heart. Now I surrender, take me. This is all I can be. Back to the start, our God is freedom. He will feel your heart, your heart beats for a shake of This is all I can bring. You never stop loving us, no matter how far we run. You never up on us and all of heaven shouts let the future begin let the future begin to take me to take me this is all I can on the God's great dance floor. We know the story of the prodigal son when the father brought him back in. Said from far away you can hear music and dancing. That's the story of our lives. That we were broken but God made us whole. That we were lost but he found us and he made us new. And that's a reason to celebrate. That's a reason to dance. That's a reason to sing. So this morning you get one more chance to dance and to sing. Are you ready? Oh, I feel alive. I come alive. I am alive on God's greatest floor. I feel alive. I come alive. I am alive on God's greatest floor. Are you ready?
sing our Father everlasting. Our Father everlasting, the all creating one, God Almighty. Through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. I believe in God Almighty. I believe in God Almighty. Our God is three and one. I believe in the resurrection. Judge and our defender, our judge and our defender, suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in Jesus. Descended into darkness, you rose in glorious light. I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three and one. I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of our church. I believe, and I believe in God our Father. Oh, I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit.
drawn you to myself that I might lead you that I might feed you that I might pastor you that I might give you a future and a hope and even as you would seek me no matter how feeble your cry may be I am attentive to those that are broken those that have a humble and a contrite heart this prayer I will not despise says the Lord but the mighty in their own mind they are far from me but I come to make my dwelling among those that are poor of spirit those that seek righteousness and desire me even from a place that was not in holiness and not in perfection I come to atone for you I come to take away your sin I come to give you an inheritance among the saints says the Lord Let's just begin to lift up a song of praise this morning. Oh, you are our shepherd. You are our shepherd. You are our redeemer. Our portion, our exceedingly great reward. Oh, God. You are
situations and see the miraculous happen and Lord this morning we pray for your sons and your daughters Lord your people that today let our faith be made stronger Lord that we are a people who believe that you we can do all that you say we can do God that you are the God of more than enough we worship you this morning in Jesus name amen 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 you guys can take your seats we serve a good God amen well, good morning. Welcome to Joy Christian Fellowship. We're so glad that you are here this morning. If you haven't met me yet, my name is Ali, and I personally welcome you here to Joy. If it is your very first time, uh, if you're joining us live in the building, you can go out to the Connections booth in the main foyer after service. We want to meet you, greet you, give you free stuff. It's always a good time. And if you can't make it out there, don't feel too bad. Right in the seat in front of you, there's a little card. It says welcome. If you want to fill that out and drop it in the offering in just a moment, that would be great. Also, if you're joining us on the live stream for the very first time this morning. We want to know that you're watching, so you can Facebook us or email us. Let us know you were here this morning, and we want to get to know you as well. Also, if you're new here to Joy, we want to invite you to our Connect groups, which are our awesome Bible studies that happen every week. See, it's exciting. Yeah, we get a little applause for that. Um, they're a lot of fun, and they can really get you connected into the family here at Joy. So you can check out more about those at our Connect Wall in the Foyer or at joychristianfellowship.com. Well, if you thought I already talked fast, I'm going to have to talk even faster this morning because we have a ton of stuff going on here at Joy. First of all, today is the Zoe Intern Bake Sale. And that's going to be a great time. It's right after service. There's arrows pointing you down this hallway right into the chapel. I was kind of taking a little preview. There's a lot of good stuff in there. There's also going to be a raffle and silent auction, so you want to make sure you buy some tickets for that. There's some great prizes. Also coming up this Tuesday is our Women of Worth kickoff. And we're really excited about that. That's at 6.30 this Tuesday. Make sure you come and bring somebody with you. Also coming up this weekend is our Kids Encounter. And that's going to be Friday and Saturday, the 17th and 18th. It's $15 a child, so make sure you sign up your child out at the info booth. Also coming up next Sunday, we are having baptisms. And that's really exciting. We love having baptisms here at Joy. So if you want to get baptized, please, please, please be sure to sign up at the info booth and then invite all of your friends and family to, wa to come and watch you. We're going to have a great time. And then afterwards, we're going to be having a reception for everyone that's baptized as well. So you don't want to miss that. And then finally, coming up the end of the month on the 31st is our harvest party for our kids. That's a lot of fun. Please remember to be bringing candy and dropping it off in the main four booth. Don't take candy out. Put candy in so we have lots for our kids to bless our kids and our community this um, harvest party. And now we're going to welcome Pastor George for the offering. Wow. Awesome. A lot of stuff happening, huh? God is good. All the time. It was good to see you because now I can't see at all. So it was a good thing I looked around out there before I came up here because I can't see a thing. But God is good. And what? Still. still, yes. Still and always will be. For the offering today, I'd like to talk to you about some good news and some bad news. The bad news first. God's words straightforwardly asks a shocking question. In Malachi 3, 8 through 10. The first verse there in 8 says, will a man rob God? And you think about that. How are you going to rob God? And to me, it's an opposite. How do you rob somebody when you have to give them something? Right? Usually when you're a robber, you take something. But God says you're robbing me by not giving something. Right? Okay. But you say, in what way have I robbed you? In tithes and offerings. And just like 
Thomas was talking about last week, only 4% got down to 4% of church members actually tithe a 10% of their income. That's really sad to me because I believe in 100% pursuit 100% of the time. Amen? There are believers today who do not practice tithing and therefore are robbing God. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. That's just the way it is. God's word speaks it, and that's the truth. And uh, as I was pondering this, one of the reasons, I believe, one of the reasons why people do not give tithes and offerings is because they don't trust. They don't trust God with 10% of their income and that's some offerings. And my question for you that do not trust God in that, if you don't trust God in 10% that you have to give, how are you going to trust him in 100% that he has to give? In your walk in life, we need God in some areas, in healing, maybe some family members that aren't walking in, the, in, the, in Jesus, and we pray for them. But I believe if you don't trust God in that 10%, you don't trust him at all with that 100% that he has to do with, with what he needs to do. So the scriptures say, well, there's a, there is a, a, a good and a bad, did I say? Yeah, so the good part is, <laughs> let's get to that. There's negativity in the room. It's too much of that already, right? <laughs> but the solution is God's solution. And every believer, if every believer obeyed this principle, tithing and offerings, there would hardly ever need to be a, a uh, fundraiser like the, the thing is today, the uh, bake sale. If everybody in this church and in churches around the world believed this, we wouldn't have to have any fundraisers. And that's cool. All the needs of the church would be met. Wow. And we have a lot of needs here at this church because we give. We give to missions and different things and all the needs of the believers would be met too. So your needs would be met as you're meeting the needs of the church. And that is so good. So in verse 10, it says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Wow. And try me now in this. Trust God in this. Have faith in God that he's going to do what he says he's going to do when you do what you say you're going to do. <laughs> Amen. All right. Go ahead, ushers. Thank you, Father, for this church, Lord, and this house that you've given us to, to uh, bring our tithes and offerings to, Lord. And Lord, we just ask that you would bless the giver, help us to use this gift properly, Lord, to the use of the ministry, and to take care of this house, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, Children's Church is dismissed, and let's welcome our pastor, Pastor Steve. Well, we're getting settled a little bit, and I'm going to introduce our very special guest speaker, Jesse McCall. Uh, just like to encourage you, that would be specifically Louis Brito, to come to the raffle. There's going to be cool stuff there. And, and all of you, see, we, we just want your money. And uh, that's not all we want. We want your help and your children and grandchildren as well. But we're going to have a lot of fun at the uh, bake sale. And uh, I know that Kim and I, we like to buy lots of those tickets because, you know, it's cool when you get like a night at uh, Callahan's and dinner and hotel and all that. And that's fun. So uh, various organizations donate and then we're able to raffle, have a lot of fun, and the proceeds go to Circle, Circle Youth. How many... Oh, this is Zoe, fundraiser, which is after you're from Circle Youth, you need to go to Zoe. So this is uh, Zoe intern uh, uh, fundraiser. Again, it's a wonderful program. These guys do some cool things. Uh, very quick sports update. The Ducks uh, came from zombie land, and they did good yesterday. And there's a little story of love and forgiveness. I've been trying to uh, minister to Robert Souza. Because during the year when he had an opportunity, 
He said, I'll never root for the Giants. I said, well, I'm sorry for that because I have compassion on the Dodgers as well. They're in our division. Dodgers won the pennant and they're at home watching the Giants today on TV. And I asked him if he was wanting to now start to root for the Giants because they're in the same division. I don't think he's repented, so prayer is still offered. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so anyway, it's a happy day. Well, let me tell you a little bit of a story as I introduce Jesse and Sora McCall. Why don't you guys both come up here? And uh, <laughs> all right. And this is Josiah. Where's Jessica? She's off in class. She's in class yeah. Okay. This is Jesse and Soar. A number of years ago, there was uh, Chuck McCall, and he was one of the elders at Eugene Christian Fellowship, and he began to talk crazy talk. Like, we think we're supposed to go to Cambodia. There was really nothing there, too much waiting for Chuck and Cindy and and they drug a 17-year-old, uh, shall we say, questionable child with them, which was Jesse. Now, you think about when you're kind of like not serving the Lord, and you're told your folks are moving to Cambodia. Now, that's like mainstream. Hello? It, it's not. It's like bung bung tiki tutu when you're an uh, American teenager. And uh, he wasn't serving the Lord. But... He caught fire after what, about two years? Yeah. yeah. Year and a half, two years. And, and most of my time knowing Jesse, he's been crazy for Jesus. And then he met this gorgeous girl, Sore. And she's half Vietnamese, half Cambodian, just to get along, you know. She, wow. And they have Jessica, who's in one of the classes, and Josiah. Just to give you an update, and then they can greet the church. The church grew with kind of a, a clue and, a, and a, a pointer from Eric Dooley, who had a, a tiny church there. I think there was like 17 initially. They were doing language classes for Cambodian kids coming out of the whole Pol Pot regime and the Khmer Rouge and the mass uh, extermination. About 2 million out of 11 million people were put to death in 1975 through 78, I believe it was. And even when the McCalls first landed there, there was still gunfire outside the city of, of uh, Phnom Penh where uh, part of the Khmer Rouge was still operating, though they didn't hold the whole country. So they went into danger, and, 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 and so this nation, the, the uh, Pol Pot regime, Khmer Rouge, had put to death all the intellectuals. All, you know, pastors, if you had a, a set of glasses, they'd kill you because you were probably an intellectual. And so it, it was a primitive society. And these young teenagers growing up wanted a hope. And so Eric Dooley and then Pastor Chuck picked it up. They began to teach English so these kids would have a leg up into uh, the society. And as they would teach them English, they would take Thursdays and they would call it Jesus Day, which was optional. You get more English, but you're going to hear about Jesus. And a good Buddhist will always say yes. So if you, if you ask a Buddhist, will you receive Jesus? Yes, I will. It doesn't mean they receive Jesus. It's a process. And so Jesse's going to tell us more about the story of how that went. But the good news was that a group of young men got saved, and then they were praying for women. And so one of the jokes was then, this lady, about 75, was added to the church, and they said, Lord, younger. <laughs> she, was the, she was the first woman added to the church, and we had to pray more specifically after that. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> and here's where the church is at. The, the Phnom Penh Church is 1,500, and about 150 outreach churches from there. Okay. A few years back, and I don't know what it is, five, six, seven years? What is it? Eight years, uh, Pastor Chuck uh, handed the work over to Jesse. There was a transition, and, uh, and so uh, Jesse's been leading this thing. He was 28 years old when he took it, 
And I was there with him uh, during some time and processing that. And uh, it was really hard for me to fly back from the States and realize Jesse's like a son to me. I love him very dearly. And I thought, wow, the weight of the world, a whole church and outreach churches is planted on 28-year-old man's shoulders. Anyway, I love this guy. You probably can tell I'm, uh, I'm prejudiced towards this work. I love the ministry. How many of you have been to Cambodia? I know Amber has stayed there. Well, there's like three of us in the, it used to be about, I think, 50 of us, but now it's down to three. Anyway, uh, why don't you greet everybody? Sora? Yeah. Good morning. I love your church. The presence of God is so strong. I feel so much like home, you know, people worshiping God and stuff. I just want to let you know that you have an amazing church. So blessed to be a part of joy. And thank you so much for supporting us, praying for us, and lifting us up in ministry. And so great to be here with you. Thank you. Awesome. Well, good morning, everyone. And uh, so awesome to be here. Just like Sora said, really do feel at home and uh, just love you guys. Love Pastor Steve and Kim and the entire Schmelzer family. Love all of you guys. Uh, we, we consider you guys family as well. And uh, just can't thank you enough for all the different ways that you guys have been behind us over the years, continue to be behind us. And uh, it's, it's real cool to be able to just be here with you guys this morning. Uh, Sor is a much better speaker than I am. Uh, anytime she speaks at our church uh, in Cambodia, she, everyone, oh, your wife was so amazing, so good. Anytime I preach, oh, the worship was so amazing today. Like, yeah, thanks, you know. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, you know what? I don't even actually preach in English very often. Uh, we are a Cambodian church through and through. Everything we do is in the Cambodian language there. Uh, so I'll do my best to just kind of chat with you guys, talk with you guys uh, in English here uh, this morning. Uh, but what I'd love to do this morning is uh, just, just talk to you a bit about uh, some things that uh, God has deposited in, in me, in, in our ministry there in Cambodia. It's been 19 years now that uh, I've lived there. That's over half my life, all of my adult life. I've never lived any of my adult life in the United States here. It's, it's been there in Cambodia. And uh, like Pastor Steve was saying, it's a country that uh, if you were to describe the Cambodian people with a word, it would be that they were very broken people looking for hope. Uh, a lot of war, a lot of devastation. During the genocide that happened in the 70s, uh, a third of the population was killed. Uh, it, it was one of the, uh, historians say it was the most radical communist regime ever implemented uh, in a country. So a lot of challenges, and it's still very much uh, a very underdeveloped nation. Uh, but in the last 19 years, a lot of great things have been happening uh, as well. And uh, you know, I don't, I don't throw this word around lightly, but I, I really believe that Cambodia is in the middle of a move of God right now. And, and, I, and I don't just say that for hype purposes, or obviously I'm, I'm prejudiced living there, but I genuinely believe that there is a move of God happening in Cambodia. Because what's happening there? Uh, and amongst our congregations and the changed lives that we're seeing, we're seeing first generation Christianity. I mean, these are uh, all those different numbers Pastor C was talking about, you know, the 150 churches and the different congregations we have there in the city. That's all first generation Christians. These are all 95% um, of them former Buddhists. And, and we can't take credit for that. I mean, we have a great team and I give a lot of credit to my team, but really it's just, it's just the Holy Spirit. And it's just been a real privilege to be part of what God is doing there. Uh, there there's just a real move of God. So your prayers and, and you guys standing behind us are 100% essential. Continue to pray for open heavens. Continue to pray for favor. Continue to pray for wisdom to, to steward those opportunities that God has given us there. Uh, but I've observed uh, over, over the years uh, a few kind of reoccurring themes that uh, I think kind of 
fuel that that revival uh, that's happening there in Cambodia. And uh, you could say these are kind of some lessons learned or or lessons observed or 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 some principles that I've seen that are really fueling that move of God. I'd love to share with you guys this morning, if that's okay. Is that all right? And, and, and I believe these are things that we can all apply to our lives as well. Sometimes uh, it's good to get realigned, isn't it? Uh, it? It's easy to kind of get a bit distracted and, and begin focusing on these things that are kind of more peripheral. And, and, and it's always good to say, you know what, I need to get back to some of these basics and get back, uh, get realigned again. Uh, so I'd love to just share with you a few things. Uh, the first thing that, that I've observed there in Cambodia is that God uses childlike faith. Let, let's look at that passage just briefly. Matthew chapter 18, verse 3, we have it here. You guys are familiar with it. Jesus is talking, and, and he says, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like what? Like little children, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. You won't be able to enter the way of living in the kingdom of God unless what? Unless we become like little children. You know what? I, I get intimidated coming to the United States. Everyone is so sophisticated. Some, <laughs> you guys are so uh, sophisticated, intellectual. We're there in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. We are not by any means the most sophisticated people. We, I, I do have a PhD. That's prayer, healing, deliverance. Uh, but besides that, we are not very sophisticated people. Uh, we, we, we got on the intellectual ladder. We still got a long way to go. Uh, but you know what? One thing that we do have is that childlike faith. And you know what? Jesus said, you won't be able to grasp the ways of the kingdom with sophistication or even intellect. The way you enter into the ways of the kingdom is with childlike faith. So sometimes we kind of got to go down a couple levels and say, you know what? I don't have to have this all figured out. All I need to do is just be able to say, God, if you said that's the way it is, then I guess that's the way it is, and I'll step out. Uh, you know, in, uh, uh, a few months ago, April, uh, is Cambodia's New Year. We have a separate calendar uh, there in, in Cambodia. And so Cambodian New Year is the middle of April every year. And uh, uh, it's a festive time. Uh, people play traditional games, and, and most people go back to their, their villages out in the rural uh, parts of Cambodia, and there's fun and games and dancing and, and all that. It, it's a great time, but it's also a very religious time because they believe that on the first day of Cambodian New Year, it's a three-day celebration, but on the first day of New Year, of Cambodian New Year, usually in the morning, they believe that a new angel comes to rule over the country. And the national astrologers that work in the royal palace there, they will tell you that it's announced over the radio, in the newspapers, and they'll tell you the new angel is going to arrive at 6.53 a.m. this Wednesday morning. So every household... Get all of your sacrifices, get the incense burning, make sure the candles are burning, and make sure you have lots of food sacrifices to welcome the presence of this demonic principality into your household. Every household across Cambodia does this. You wake up that morning, nothing but the smell of incense. Every house, they got their doors open, they got their windows open, a big table there, candles burning, and, 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 and these food sacrifices to offer this demonic principality. And so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit of a dark time as well. It's a very religious time uh, for people, and people strongly believe in this. So for many years, we, the evening before the new angel comes, and they call it welcoming the new angel, the evening before that new angel comes, our church has a welcome Holy Spirit service. And it's a good old traditional Holy Ghost service. And, 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 and we make room for the Holy Ghost. Uh, but it's also a time of prayer and intercession for the nation. And so we know what's going to be going on the next morning. And so the evening before, we're praying. And most of our, 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 our congregation are first-generation believers. So they're praying for their families. They're praying for their relatives. They're praying for the people back in their villages because they know what they're going to be involved in the next morning. So about 
12, 13 years ago, we're having one of our Welcome Holy Spirit services in the church there. Good time. We're praying for the nation. We're crying out. And uh, a little girl, she's about 12 years old. She, uh, we, we kind of opened up the stage and said, if anyone wants to just come up here and grab the mic and just begin to intercede for the nation, let's go ahead and do that. And a little girl about 12 years old said, can I come up and, and can I pray for, for, for our nation as well? So we said, yep, come on up. And she started praying. She was on fire. Father God, we pray for our nation. We proclaim Cambodia's for Christ. And we don't want this new angel in our nation. In fact, we ask that you kick it out of our nation and it never comes back. And everyone was, amen, hallelujah, great. Well, interestingly enough, the next day when the new angel uh, uh, arrives, uh, wasn't the next day, but the day after in the newspapers, on the radio, all of a sudden this interesting report starts coming out the day after the angel uh, is supposed to arrive. And in the newspapers, all over the radio, the national astrologers who are in touch with this whole kind of spirit world stuff, they begin to announce, we don't know what happened because this has never happened before, but the new angel didn't show up this year. <laughs> You can go back into the archives 10, uh, uh, 12, 13 years ago, and you can pull this up in the newspapers. You ask anyone that remembers, you remember that one year when the new angel never came? Never came? Yeah. Uh, and they said, we don't know what happened, but it didn't come. It didn't show up this year. And you know what? I believe the prayers of that little girl and the childlike faith of that little girl, I believe that principality was torn down. I believe it's never been back since then. They still go through the tradition every year now, but I believe a principality was torn down. Why? Because God honors childlike faith, doesn't he? No one, no one told her that, well, you know, that's too big of a prayer and you can't really pray that because that would just be a token prayer. It wouldn't happen anyway. She, she, you, yeah, you start using kind of the, the intellect and the sophistication. Well, how technically would that work? And how, you know, what about this? Hey, just, just quit that. Tell your neighbor, just quit that. We, we don't need too much of that. But just, hey, why not? Why not? We, we, isn't that God's will? All right, if it's God's will, boom, let's kick that thing out of here. And that principality was torn down. Uh, one of, our, one of our leaders, uh, great man of God, great, great couple, Mara and Leah Kong. Uh, Leah is actually originally from Eugene, Oregon. Mara is one of the founding members of the church there, uh, part, of our, part of our leadership team there. Great, great friend uh, of ours and, and, and great part of the leadership team there. Mara is one of those guys who has that childlike faith. Uh, great minister, great leader. But he's the kind of guy that, you know, you come, you come walking into the service and, and maybe you're limping a little bit and, and he'll say, so, hey, what are you limping? What, what happened? Well, I just kind of stubbed my toe on the way in. I'll be okay here in a few minutes. And he'll stop and say, no, 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 let, let's pray for your toe. Which toe is it? Let's pray right now. And he's like, well, Mara, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'll, it'll probably be fine in 10, 15 minutes. No, let's pray right now. Let's pray for a healing right now. He's got that kind of childlike faith. And uh, several years ago, at our building, uh, the, we were having a, an electrical problem at our building. And if you've been to, to some of the third world countries and you see the way they build these buildings and they do the electrical wiring, the electrical wiring is all in the walls. There's no mapping it out. And it's in these brick walls. And the entire top floor was having an electrical short. We looked in the, the normal places where there would be an electrical short, uh, we checked all of those places, couldn't, couldn't find anything, and Mara has an electrical uh, electrician background, and uh, so he was checking everything, and, and we couldn't find where the short was. And, and the next choice was we're going to have to start tearing the wire out of the wall, out of the tile floors, which would be a big mess, a big expense, until we found where the short was. So that evening, Mara said, well, why don't I just pray about this? And I think God can help us with this. So that evening, before he goes to bed, he prays, God, show us where the short is. We don't want to have to go through the hassle and through the expense and through the mess of tearing out the wires. Where's the short, God? The next morning, I was downstairs, and, and uh, I heard a commotion upstairs on, on, on the second floor there. I hear some shouting. What's, what's going on? You know, is there a fight? Or, what, you know, what's going on? And uh, what had happened is in the night, Mara had a dream. And he had a dream of him going over to a corner of the room, 
breaking open one of the floor tiles, just one of them, and underneath there found the short. So what did he do? In the morning, he woke up, got his hammer out, broke one tile, found the short right there. Problem solved. Thank you, Jesus. But, but what is that again? It's that childlike faith, isn't it? Because no one told him, Mara, come on. You got two hands. God gave you a head and two hands. Just deal with it. God doesn't have time to deal with that kind of stuff. He's got that childlike faith. Well, why not? Why wouldn't God be concerned with this little problem? It's not a huge problem, but why wouldn't God be concerned? Childlike faith. Tell your neighbor you need some more childlike faith. Amen. How many people say, I could use some more childlike faith, yeah? You know, another... Uh, principle that I've observed, and I believe, you know, it really is kind of uh, 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 fueling that, that move of God uh, to a degree there in Cambodia, is that you don't have to have all the answers. Just step out on a word from God. You, you, you don't have to have all the answers. Just, just step out on that word from God. You guys are familiar with uh, Jesus. Uh, 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 Jesus' disciples are in the boat and they see Jesus walking to them, right? And Peter, I love Peter. Peter says, Lord, if that's really you, call me out. So Jesus says, come. And so Peter's walking. He's not just walking on water. He's walking on the word of God, right? He's walking, and, and he's walking to Jesus. And he steps out of that boat. And you can imagine what he was thinking when he was stepping out of that boat. I'm a fisherman. I know physics. I know how this works. And when I step on there, I'm not supposed to be able to stand on the water. Uh, he didn't have it all figured out again, did he? But he said, you know what, I'm just going gonna, gonna to step out. I, I don't have all the answers. I, I really don't know how this is going to work. All I know is God's telling me to step out, so I'm going to step out. And I want to I wanna, I wanna encourage you this morning that there are oftentimes words that God's speaking to you and, and or has spoken to you even. And maybe you need to step out a bit. Even though you don't have all the answers. Now, now that doesn't negate getting wise counsel from the leadership and, and, and from those that are more mature for, than you. Get wise counsel and, 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 and get some, some wisdom in there. But, but you have to be able to take those steps and say, all right, God, I don't, I don't understand how this is going to work, but I'm going to step out. Uh, a few years ago, uh, my wife and I were invited to uh, a birthday party uh, of a, uh, the dean of a university there, uh, not an uh, unbeliever, and uh, he had this uh, birthday party, and he held it at what they call a beer garden. It, it was kind of a bar-type setting there. My wife and I had never been in one of these beer gardens, but there's literally probably a good three, 400 beer gardens all over Phnom Penh, uh, these similar-type settings. And so we went in there for his birthday party, uh, had a big meal in there, and we were shocked because inside that beer garden, there were probably 70 to 80 scantily dressed young women waiting for customers to pick them up inside there. And, and, and I sat there and we went home shocked, realizing that this is just one of those places. And these places are literally spread all across the city. And, and, mo and I, begin to, I begin to think about what, why are those girls in there? Uh, they weren't in necessarily enslaved in there, but for one reason or another, they'd made some bad decisions. Maybe they were taken advantage of and they felt dirty now, as, according to the society there. And they just thought, I don't have any way out. I'm in here now, whether it was bad decisions or I got abused or taken advantage of at one time in life. And now I'm in here and, and there's no way out. And I'm just stuck, so I might as well just stay in here the rest of my life. And I begin to think, there's a way out. There is a way out. And it's not just the government's job. It's just uh, the various nonprofits' job. It's the church's job to tell them that there's a way out. And his name is Jesus. And, and so, uh, you know what? I actually canceled my, 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 my prepared, prepared sermon for that Sunday. And I talked about it that Sunday. And I just told the church, I said, church, are we going to be a ki the kind of church that people like that? whether it's those girls or whether it's people in the gangs or whether it's the people that society has deemed dirty and bad, are we going to be the kind of church that can welcome those types of people or not? 
And, uh, and I really challenge the church. We got to be a church that we can, they, they don't know how to dress. They don't know the Christianese. They don't know when to raise their hands or not, but we should be able to welcome them. And we should be the ones telling them there's a way out. His name is Jesus. Uh, so I preached about that, that, that Sunday afterwards. And a young girl in our church uh, came up to my wife and I afterwards. Her name was uh, Solida. You could call her Da. And uh, Solida came up to us. Solida was a, a girl that had uh, come from an unbelieving family. Uh, she came to the city farmers. Uh, her parents were farmers. Uh, she lived in one of our dormitories. We have uh, dormitories. We call them next step houses. And uh, came to the Lord there, only believer in her family at that time. And uh, uh, she was probably 22 years old at that time. She came up to, to Sor and myself, and she said, uh, Jesse, Sor, what you spoke on today is something that God's been speaking to me about. And God's been speaking to me that I, be, I need to reach out to these girls. Uh, she wasn't a university graduate at that time. Uh, she didn't have any real corporate uh, experience working. But she said, I know that God is speaking to me to reach out to the girls in the bars and in the clubs and, and all that. Can you guys pray for me? So we prayed for her. Well, probably nine, ten months later, she ended up quitting her job. She started an organization called Precious Woman. That, that's what they do full time. They go into the bars, they go into the clubs, and they tell these girls there's a way out. There's people that love you. We love you. Jesus loves you. And there is a way out. Then now they have safe houses where these girls can come out. They can learn skills. Uh, my wife's on her board. And, and, and she was sitting in our living room a while back. And, and she, she told me, she said, Jesse, I don't know what I'm doing. She said, I've never done this before. I've never started this nonprofit and, 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 and done this type of work before. I have no experience. She said, I don't know what I'm doing. All I know is that God spoke and I'm stepping out. And you know what? They're, they're changing lives because of that. And uh, I, I just love to encourage you this morning. What are those things that God has or is speaking to you? Don't hold back. What are those things? Maybe you don't feel qualified. Welcome to the club. Yeah. Maybe you feel it's way beyond you. Yep, that's, that's normal Christianity right there. But you know what? The world is changed. Lives are changed when even if we don't have all the answers, we're willing to step out of the boat a bit. Amen? Amen. You know, the, one of, kind of the, the final things that I've observed there in Cambodia is that, like I said, Cambodia is a, a nation of, of broken people. But you know what I, I've discovered? I've discovered that no matter how much brokenness one may have, God's light can still shine through you. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 Verses 6 through 7, I believe we have it here. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. Verse 7, but we have this treasure, the knowledge of God, the light of the knowledge of God. That's the treasure. Where is it? It's in jars of clay that sh to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from, we're those jars of clay, we're those vessels, and you know what, we're, 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 we're cracked. Some say we're all crack pots, right? <laughs> we, we have that broken, we all have brokenness, but you know what, it's through that brokenness that God's light shines through. You know what, you, you have brokenness, I have brokenness, but that's how, that's how God's light shines through us. Uh, I told you the story of, uh, of, of Pastor Mara a bit. And uh, Pastor Mara was also involved in planting one of our first churches outside the city. And uh, cool story how, how that all happened. Uh, basically just a, a wide open door about two hours north outside the city in the rural areas there, uh, in the villages there, where, where we just had a wide open opportunity to bring the gospel. Basically, a girl came from, the, came from that village, got saved in our church, and then felt uh, to go back and, and live in her village again, uh, cast the demon out of her demonized cousin, and her dad, who was the village drunk, gave his life to the Lord, and then she wrote a letter to us saying, please help, the whole village wants to know Jesus. So, so we started sending uh, uh, Mara up there, 
uh, and, and Mara begin to, to go up there every Thursday, uh, drive, uh, actually it's not two hours, it's four hours, sorry, yeah, four hours north in our four-wheel drive truck, Soar would go up there, a few others, most of them would get car sick going up, car sick going back, eight hours of traveling, go up there, uh, do some evangelistic meetings, begin to meet different people there in the village, uh, and then they would drive back that Thursday evening, get car sick all the way back as well. And uh, sometimes Mara would send the team back to the city on ahead, and he would stay there in the evenings and hold Bible studies in the evenings, uh, those Thursday evenings. So if you can imagine Mara sitting on some plastic chairs, and it's hot and humid, and you got a little light bulb maybe hanging down. It's out. We didn't have a church building or anything at that time. And he's holding Bible studies for, for, for these people that are open to Christ. And uh, in the back of that kind of group of people that were studying the Bible, there is a man named Mr. Hon. Mr. Hon, as a young teenager, adolescent, uh, is when the war started in Cambodia. Uh, it was a civil war. It was a, a terrible war. And he joined the military at that time, just as a teenage soldier, if you can imagine. He didn't, he didn't get to experience uh, the adolescent or teenage years like a lot of people do. He, he, he uh, spent his teenage years killing people and seeing people killed as a soldier. Uh, he did that for many years. When the war finally wound down, uh, the government began releasing soldiers. They didn't need as large of a military anymore, and so he was out of a job. And so he and some ex-soldiers ended up creating a kidnapping gang. And that's how they made their living. They had military skills. They knew how to be fierce and brute and, and all that. And so they would kidnap people, hold them for ransom, get the ransom, release them, and then go out and party. That's, that's how they lived. And so Mr. Hahn lived in that area, that region, and he heard about this guy who traveled from Phnom Penh, drove a four-wheel drive up there, uh, dr drove a four-wheel drive up there, so he must be decently well off. And he said, well, me and my gang are going to look for an opportunity to kidnap that guy. That guy was Mara, Pastor Mara. So he would come and sit in the back of this Bible study on Thursday nights, dark, got a single little light bulb hanging down there, looking for an opportunity to kidnap Pastor Mara. And he would sit back there for weeks on end, following his movements. What time does he come? What time does he leave? Not interested in the Bible study. You know what? Thank God, the message that Pastor Mara was teaching eventually got through, and Mr. Hahn ended up giving his life to the Lord. Not only that, but Mr. Hahn is now one of our pastors up in that region. <laughs> He's kidnapping people for Jesus, right? <laughs> you know what? If you were to meet him today, and, and maybe some of you that have been over there have met him, he is one of the most warm, loving people you'll ever meet. He's known in that community for just being a very warm, loving person. He's the kind of guy you can't get around him without being hugged, you know? And, and you would never know of his past, his childhood, and his adolescence and all the atrocities that he experienced and that he saw. And, and, and you think about the brokenness, a very broken man. But you know what? The light of God is shining through him. Amen? There's another uh, girl in our church. Uh, her name is Panya. And uh, my wife and I know Panya very well because she lived with us for a while. We've had young people living with us probably since about two years after we got married. Uh, and so we've had young people living with us for, for, for many, many years. And uh, Panya grew up in an orphanage, uh, never knew her parents. You don't want to grow up in a Cambodian orphanage because the, the lack of law and rules there in the orphanage, there's a lot of abuse that happens. It's, it's, it's a big institution. You don't, there's not really the family feeling there. It's not a good place. She grew up in this orphanage. Uh, she told us that uh, she tried to kill herself several times while growing up just as a young kid there in the orphanage. Uh, had uh, all types of things happen to her. 
uh, found herself tied up several times where they would tie her up and not let her go out. And just terrible atrocities that, that happened to her growing up in that orphanage. Uh, when she hit 18, uh, you can't live in the orphanage anymore. You're not, you're not a, a child anymore, and so they just kind of let you go. Uh, she found work for uh, a few different families there, kind of cleaning their houses, and ended up in a house next to one of our church members cleaning their house. And uh, our, our church members told us about her, and they said, there's this young girl, she's working over here at our neighbor's house. It doesn't look like a good situation. It looks like these people, uh, if they're not currently abusing her and taking advantage of her, it looks like they, they may be doing that in the near future. Is there any way the church can help out? And so we brought her in to live with us. A very broken girl. Uh, if you can imagine all of her life uh, growing up in, in these abusive situations. And we, uh, we, we, we took her in. We just loved on her. And she came to know the Lord. She ended up giving her life to, to the Lord Jesus. After that, she eventually moved into one of our dormitories. And like I mentioned, we have dormitories around the city for young people. Moved into one of those dormitories. And that's much more of a, a family setting there. And, and uh, begin to grow and begin to develop. You know what? Today, she's a great woman of God. She's, t she's, uh, she's been in our worship ministry. She's currently working uh, as a manager in uh, this organization that works with troubled, uh, troubled uh, street children. And you know what? If you saw her today, you would never know of her past. She's the kind of person that when she walks into the room, the whole room lights up. Everyone's having fun. Everyone's laughing when she comes into the room. A very warm, loving person. But you know what? Again, this is, this is the way it works in the kingdom of God. That through our brokenness, God's light shines through. And so I just want to encourage you this morning. God's got more for all of us. He has more for all of us. Let's, let's, let's allow a bit more of that childlike faith to develop in our hearts. Let's, let's step out in those areas where God has been saying, son, daughter, it's time to get out of the boat, time to step out a bit, time to step out on those things I've called you to do. And let's not allow that brokenness to hinder the light of God shining through us. We all have it. Allow God to bring healing. There's nothing like a great healing community, the local church, but allow God's light to begin shining out of you despite the brokenness that you may have. Amen. God bless you guys. Love you guys. Awesome to be with you guys this morning. Well, I've got another reason to resent him. He's getting us out early. <laughs> this is just wrong. How many of you feel your faith just lifted? As you, as you begin to hear the stories of Jesus. Let's all stand together. One of the things that, that I've truly enjoyed over the years that we've been in relationship with Chuck and Cindy and then Jesse and Soar and New Life is that we grew up here in the, the Western uh, world with Christianity being the backdrop. And so even people who don't really know uh, Jesus and they don't know the Father, they've heard about the Father. They've, they've had Christian symbols and teachings in part all of their life. And when, when you begin to see people who didn't have that whatsoever in their life, and then the knowledge of Jesus dawns in their heart, and you see that new creation reality break forth and the fruits of Jesus, it, it, it doubly or triply convinces you of your faith in God. See, Christianity is more than just kind of seizing onto a list of rules or it's not just adhering, cleaning yourself up to make yourself clean before God. But Christianity in coming to Christ, whether it's in Cambodia or whether it's in Medford, is that awareness that God the Father loves you that God so loved you individually and us collectively that he gave his son to die for us. The problem with mankind is not that he needs education, though he does need that. The problem with man is the sin issue. 
Sin separates us from God. And so we find that the, the holy God is, is abandoned not only from the time of Adam, but each of us through our sin choices, whether it was one sin or a great number of sins, we've separated ourselves from God through our sin. But God seeing the, the penalty of sin coming upon mankind said, I can't live with that. I, I have an anecdote, an antidote, antidote. I have Jesus, my son. And Jesus Christ died that you and I could have faith in the living God. Right now, I'd like every one of you that would like to have that antidote working for you and in your life, you'd like to be born again, which is to say you'd like a new start in life. Jesus told Nicodemus, he said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. That doesn't mean that you're pledging to be better. Maybe you're pondering coming to Jesus Christ and you may be looking at your life, looking at the mirror of your life and saying, I don't believe that I have the goodness in me that it would take to be a Christian, or I don't know that I could turn my life around, that I could clean myself up. One thing I've learned over the years is it's better to take a shower before you take a bath. That the shower takes with it, it takes the dirt as I soap up and shampoo and lather and all the things you do in the shower. Then if you want a long cleansing bath, you're really in good shape. Well, God's shower is the blood of Jesus Christ. God's shower is us having the blood of Jesus wash away our sins, becoming brand new. It's a new construction when you come to the living God. You find that maybe you were sold to do wrong. You were just really wound up in some level of, of sin expression. Maybe it's relationships that are illicit or uh, things in your mind that are illicit and wrong and, and dark and you don't want anyone to know about it or possibly it's the fact that your, your past was really filled with shame and you just feel like you can't escape it. Well, the Bible answer is for the old you to die and we rise in newness of life. The Lord doesn't say he comes and patches our life. The Bible says if anyone is in Christ, they're a new creation. You literally are, are made new because the old you sold in sin was worthy of death. And that's why we ask people to be baptized in water. That water doesn't represent water that washes you, it represents dirt that literally depicts that you're buried with Christ and rise up in newness of life. So if you're here and you say, you know, I want a new life. I want to put my faith in Jesus Christ. I want to be born again, born of God. I'd like every one of you that came here today looking for that level of help, step out of your chair right now. Those of you watching on the live stream, we also want to invite you that you can call on the name of the Lord and he will hear your prayer and you can be born again and will be born again of the living God. Come on right now, step out of your chair. If you're here and, and, and sometimes people are a little reluctant, Help them along, friend. If you see your friend there and they're pondering this, trust me, today's a great day. There was a great day for Kim and I 30 years ago. Jake was born on October 12th, but it's a great spiritual birthday for you. Our oldest son was born today. How about becoming born again on October 12th? Step out of your chair very quickly. I'm pushy. You'll never see me try to sell you a vacuum cleaner with this much force, but I will coming to Jesus because this is one product that is guaranteed to do exactly what it's advertised to do. If you call on the name of the Lord, you will be saved. Come on, come on, come on. Very quickly. I want every one of you that want, want every one of you that are here that want God to step down. Let's receive the Lord today. All right, very quickly. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. All right. Super cool. I believe there are more folks here. Today's your birthday. Come on down. Receive the Lord. It's a good day to receive the Lord. Let's all pray this together. Just uh, have the young man just repeat this. 
Let's all pray this prayer. Dear Father, I thank you that you loved me and you've pursued me. You couldn't take the sin that I lived in. And so you sent the answer, which is Jesus Christ. I thank you for the life that Jesus lived and the life that Jesus gave. He gave himself as the Lamb of God. He was slain. His blood was shed. And it was spilled to cover my sin, to pay for me and my sin, that I could awake and arise in newness of life. I thank you, Father, for giving me salvation. You said if I would call on your name, I would be saved. I'm calling. You also said, if I would call on your name, I would not be ashamed. Take away my shame, I pray. If you be my father, I'll be your child. If you'll be my God, I'll be your servant. I receive you this day, dear Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 For the rest of us, I'd like to take a moment and pray with you. When I think of this beautiful miracle and series of miracles that are happening in Cambodia, I'm reminded of that little saying that we have, we the unwilling, led by the unqualified, have been doing so much with so little for so long. We now feel qualified to do absolutely everything with absolutely nothing. And I remember the dream as it was being articulated by Chuck and Cindy, some of the early pictures they'd show of going to Cambodia. And it was a little theme park where it had live crocodiles. Let me talk about an easy way to get rid of your children. And I remember them coming back and talking about the need. And me listening on and thinking, wow, what would possess a person to want to leave Oregon, Eugene area? What would possess a person to just sell out? And it's called the Holy Spirit. When we permit God to work in us through the Holy Spirit, the Bible says that those that are led of the Spirit are like the wind. No man knows from where they come and where they go. They just are led. God's already done some crazy things in your life. Many of you we were born in the Spirit and you got comfortable and you've taken the off-ramp and you say, this is enough, no more. But to reactivate your Christianity in a, in a great way, you have to say, Lord, get me out of the garage back on the freeway of obedience. Speak crazy things so that my believer doesn't get parked, but like Abraham, I keep ascending in my levels of obedience. How many of you will pray with me? Because this is a prayer that I'm currently praying. God, at my age, help me not to settle in and lock in to success to the degree I have it. But God, I want to do it for the next generation. I want to push hard. I want, to, I want to hunger for you hard, Lord. I don't want token prayers. I want red hot prayers. Am I just up here talking to myself? How many of you feel the Holy Spirit stirring us up? Yeah. Could we raise our hands real quick? Can we do something crazy that will definitely identify us as a Pentecostal church? Could we pray in our prayer language? This is, we're, we're edifying ourselves. I understand your interpretation. We're not asking to impress anybody, but let's just talk in tongues for a minute and say, Holy Spirit, don't, don't bypass me. Come, Holy Spirit, come into my life. 
Sona na na Maria da da Maria da na Maria da da dia. Lord, sore na 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 Maria da da dia da dia. Sore na 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 Maria na na Maria da 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 dia. Come, Holy Spirit, lead us, guide us, stir us up, Lord, to have childlike faith, to step out. Thank you for those simple principles. Thank you, Father. We believe you're doing great things. You're doing it in Cambodia. You're doing it in Vietnam. You're doing things in Thailand. You're doing things in Malaysia, Indonesia, all across Southeast Asia. You're doing things in Medford. You're doing things in my life. You're doing things in us, Lord. Come on, let's talk in English. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Stir us up. Keep us on the cutting edge. Sharpen the saw, dear God. Help us, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Repeat this prayer with me. Dear God, keep after me. Holy Spirit, do not leave me. I want to be sensitized to the moving of the Holy Spirit. I want to hear your still small voice. I don't need loud explosions. I need to hear that voice behind me saying this is the way. Walk in it. Help me, God. Help us, God, to have simple faith, childlike faith, and to act on it. Thank you for this teaching, God. Help me to get it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 As we take a special offering right now, uh, my wife and I and family, we want to sow some seed into Cambodia. And uh, so what you do is just write it to Joy, Joy Christian Fellowship, and put Pastor Steve's uh, special fund. No, 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 don't do that. Uh, or new golf clubs will be being bought. What you do is, is put in, in there, just say Cambodia, Pastor Jesse, or you could put guest speaker, and we're going we're gonna, to uh, total it, and we're going to give a special offering. So ushers, if you would, let's, uh, let's go ahead and start this. And, uh, and if everybody would stay put for a little bit until Allie does the announcement and we collect the offering. Go ahead, ushers.